viscosity of a fluid is an important property that gives us a, uh, a quantitative measure of uh, fluid flow. Uh, let's imagine uh, that fluid uh, is uh, made up of different layers and uh, we are going to assume that the very bottom layer as shown in this figure uh, sticks to the wall. So in other words it doesn't move. Uh, in fact we call this a no slip boundary condition and uh, all fluids uh, actually satisfy this condition. So we have this imaginary fluid with different layers and the very bottom layer is uh, sticking to the wall whereas the top layer is where we apply a shear force. So the top layer is going to move in the direction uh, in which the force is applied and the layer that is right underneath the very top layer will also move uh, because it is being dragged to the right hand side and similarly the layer that is below that second layer is also going to move uh, and so on. So if we try to draw a velocity profile that will tell us uh, the velocity of different layers, we know that the very bottom layer uh, will have zero velocity because it is sticking to the wall and then the layer above that will have a certain velocity uh, as expressed by this arrow and then a higher velocity and so on and the highest velocity will be for the very top layer. So here is a velocity profile. It is a line uh, that expresses the velocity change from the bottom to the top. So we observe that uh, as the shearing force uh, is moving these layers towards the right hand side, there is also a uh, resistance force that is acting in the opposite direction to the shearing force and it also acts in a direction parallel to the surface between the layers. Now this uh, resistance force is uh, the measure of this property that we are going to examine called viscosity. Now we have all observed different types of fluids. Uh, for example, water flows fairly easily. So again if you are imagining that water was actually made up of these uh, single layers, the resistance to the movement of these layers towards say right hand side is, uh, is fairly easy. Uh, there is not much of uh, resistance. Whereas if you replace water with say honey, uh, you know that the opposing force uh, to the uh, shearing force is going to be quite high and that's why honey does not flow that easily as water will. So the term uh, viscosity which is the measure of that flow will tell us something about the difference between the flow characteristics of water as we compare it with another fluid, for example, a honey. So now let's take it one step further to uh, get a quantitative measure. In this uh, velocity profile, we will expand this uh, to, to develop a mathematical relationship. So we have uh, the uh, vertical line here expressed as AC and uh, after application of the shearing force, let's say that point C moves to point C dash. In other words, it moves by a distance delta x. And uh, so the line, the vertical line AC is now deflected to AC dash. And that angle of deflection is delta theta. And also, uh, let's say that the uh, distance between A and C is dy. So now you know from uh, your trigonometry that tangent of delta theta is delta x divided by dy. Now if the angle of deflection is fairly small then we can say that tangent delta theta is about equal to delta theta. Therefore delta theta then equals delta x over dy. So next we can uh, uh, express that linear displacement delta x in terms of the velocity because you know that velocity is distance over time. So we can say that delta x, this linear displacement, equals du, which is the small 
change in velocity times delta t. So now we can substitute this delta x in our previous expression and get delta theta equals du delta t over dy. So this uh, equation now tells us that this uh, angular displacement uh, not only uh, depends on the velocity as well as the separation between the plates but also depends on the time. So in case of fluids we must correlate our shearing stress with the shearing rate. So it is not only the force that is being applied but also we have to consider the time. So the rate of shear which is uh, be expressed as Greek letter gamma uh, and we'll put a dot on it that will equal the limit of delta theta over delta t. Now delta theta remember was the deflection of that line from AC to AC dash and we are saying that that deflection divided by the time it takes for it to deflect is the rate of shear and again we put that dot because uh, this term has time. So then we can replace this delta theta from what we obtained earlier which was du o delta t over dy divided by delta t so delta t will cancel out and gamma dot will equal du over dy. So the shear rate then is the change in the velocity divided by the distance between the plates. So it is du over dy. And uh, Newton uh, observed that uh, when you increase the shearing stress uh, by increasing of course the force, remember stress is force per unit area, so anytime you increase shearing stress then the rate of shear, this gamma dot, will also increase in direct proportion. So the shearing stress which we give a symbol sigma, so sigma is directly proportional to gamma dot. Uh, this is again based on Newton's observation and uh, so we can say sigma is proportional to du over dy. Now if we remove the proportionality factor then we have to introduce a constant and of course we want to do that so we have an equation that we can use in solving problems. So sigma equals mu, so mu is the constant, du over dy. Now mu is called the coefficient of viscosity and this is what gives us an indication of the flow behavior of the fluid. Now Newton is the one who uh, first observed this uh, the direct proportionality. So for all types of fluids that have this direct proportionality between shear rate and shear stress are called Newtonian liquids. Uh, so water is a Newtonian liquid, uh, milk is a Newtonian liquid, uh, juices are Newtonian liquids and so on. So if we want to plot this shear stress versus shear rate, we get a straight line uh, based on our equation and the slope of that straight line is mu. Remember the equation of a straight line, y is equal to mx plus c, where m is the slope. So here y is sigma and x is du over dy, that is what we have in our plot and the slope is mu. So mu is the viscosity. Again, this is true for all Newtonian fluids. Uh, in a separate module, we will look at certain fluids that do not follow this linear relationship. They are called non-Newtonian fluids. So let's look at the units of viscosity. Uh, remember that uh, shear stress equals force per unit area. So it is Newton per square meters. Uh, we also call it Pascal. Uh, and the shear rate is uh, du over dy. Uh, so the unit for du, uh, is, which is velocity, is meter per second and uh, dy is the distance, so that's meters, so meter, meter will cancel out. So the units of shear rate 
are 1 over second. Uh, now, if we substitute that into our equation for viscosity, units of viscosity are Pascal divided by per second. So in other words, that is a 1 over second. And uh, uh, we can rearrange uh, to get that second in the numerator. So the units of viscosity are Pascal second. Now we can look at some values of different types of fluids and we find that viscosity of air is very small. It's uh, 10 raised to power minus 5 Pascal second, whereas the viscosity of water is 10 raised to power minus 3. Uh, viscosity of olive oil is 10 raised to power minus 1 and uh, viscosity of honey is uh, 10 raised to power 1. So uh, we have quite a variation of uh, viscosities of Newtonian fluids that uh, tells us something about the uh, flow behavior characteristics. There are also other units that are used to express viscosity. Note that Pascal is uh, Newtons per square meter. Remember that was the unit for pressure. So uh, if we substitute instead of Pascal, Newton per square meters, so we have uh, viscosity as Newton per square meter times second. Note that force uh, uh, from uh, Newton's second law is mass times acceleration. And uh, the SI system unit for force is uh, Newton. So we can say 1 Newton equals uh, mass is kilograms, uh, acceleration is meter per second square. So uh, force, 1 Newton, can also be expressed as 1 kilogram meter per second square. So now if we go back to the viscosity units, which we said earlier are expressed as Pascal second, then we can rewrite that. Instead of Pascal, we can say Newton per square meter, which is force per unit area, times second. And then we can replace for Newtons uh, the what we just derived kilogram meter per second square and then of course we have the meter square in the denominator uh, and uh, times second and uh, then we can simplify that uh, and cancel out uh, some of the terms to get kilograms per meter second. In the CGS system, uh, that's the centimeter gram system, the unit that is used for viscosity is called poise and uh, the viscosity of water uh, at ambient temperatures is about one centipoise. In our uh, calculations, we will mostly deal with the SI system, so uh, either uh, viscosity is expressed as Pascal seconds or as kilogram per meter second.